laser pointer. Uh, so we are here on 6 Hickory Street on behalf of Nathan S. Cohen and Eileen L. Little. And proposed work, uh, I suppose a bit of a housekeeping. The legal ad, which copied from my application, um, it should have said 29 foot tall, not 29 foot. The, the footprint itself is 24 by 24. Um, and the proposed work is to construct a conforming addition to a pre-existing non-conforming single family structure. And um, on top of that, there is the request to also get a home occupation accessory use so that the addition can be used um, not just for private use, but also for uh, a few lessons given out by Eileen. I'll we'll get into that in a minute. So by way of background, we are in the R20 district, but we have the superseding setbacks for North Gloucester. The existing nonconformities relate to the lot size. This is a 10,000 plus square foot lot, but you need 20,000 in the R20. And the left side yard setback, you need 10 feet even with the superseding requirements, and the house is only about 5.2 feet off of it. Uh, continue by way of background. As I mentioned, I'm here with Nathan and Eileen. They're off screen to my left. If uh, there's any questions that I can't answer, they'll be able to chime in. They are the owners and the occupants of the home. They're raising their family out in Lanesville, which uh, you know only a few are fortunate enough to do, so we're happy for them. And uh, Eileen, uh, among her many talents, performs and instructs aerial dance. This is actually her doing a street show in um, Rockport. She is holding up a, a student. And she uh, also teaches some lessons for adults and children. There is no indoor space on Cape Ann to practice because aerial dance requires this, you know, fairly basic but tall apparatus to, you know, um, to run the harnesses to actually, and, and the, the lines to get up there, right? So there's no indoor space in Cape Ann to practice. And so right now, this is a picture of their child um, watching Kylie practice in the backyard. So this is what she has to do currently. She has to set the rig up in the backyard and hope for good weather and hope for calm winds. Um, and so this includes when she's teaching lessons. She currently teaches lessons um, at the home already. And again, it requires them to set up in the backyard and uh, just kind of do it up in the open when the weather permits. So the relief requested, uh, the first part is one of those either or. So we either need a finding that no special permit is needed because um, although it, because it's a single family home that is not conforming, but the entire addition conforms and there's no increase to any existing nonconformity. If this board happens to find there is an increase, then we have to do a part two of that test. And then we would need a special permit to alter or expand a non-conforming structure. Um, and either way, we would ask for a special permit, use permit for home occupation. Now, I want to be clear, this is an accessory use, and we'll get into all the restrictions later. But this remains, by far and large, a residential building for residential purposes. And this is strictly an accessory use Eileen's primary use is going to be for her own personal practice. But again, she's already teaching lessons. And while we're here in front of you, it just seems like the right thing to do to make sure that we get you know, the proper permit. Um, here, per usual, is the full set of plans. Here's the site plan. This is a 3D rendering. Everything in red is the proposed addition. This is it from the back. So that's, I should have mentioned, this is as you would see it from the, the street. This is as you'd see it from the back. Here are the 2D drawings. And here is the overhead showing the footprints. Um, I also want to mention that there was, a, there was overwhelming support. And um, because we were not able to get all the petitions in by Monday, I've added them to the slides here to make sure they hit the record. Um, we didn't want to be, you know, Johnny come lately trying to hand stuff to Allison on Wednesday afternoon. Um, needless to say, I'll show you the map in a second. There's overwhelming neighborhood support for this petition. Uh, Nathan and Eileen did their, their, their groundwork, went around, knocked on some doors, talked to as many neighbors as they could find, showed the plans, and grabbed all the signatures. Uh, this just shows you a representation of what those signatures um, add up to. The yellow uh, property is the subject property, and every property highlighted in green signed a petition in favor of the application. Um, we also, again, beyond your deadline, um, received two really beautiful letters uh, in support. They're not very long. I'm gonna read them into the record to make sure they hit. 
Uh, this one's from Peggy Lyman. She says, for the past few years, I've tried to get my daughter involved in sports, anything physical to move her body. She confessed wholeheartedly to me, mom, I do not like things with balls. She is quiet, plays it safe, and runs from competition. Prior to COVID, she tried an aerial silks class with Eileen in a yoga studio. And for the first time, I saw a fire in my daughter's eyes, hanging upside down, wrapped in silks, moving her body in space and time. When the session was over, we hunted uh, for more aerial silk classes, but she was never old enough. And they were too far away. When Eileen contacted us and said she was doing them outside in her yard, we were both thrilled. Ruby started middle school last year remotely in Rockport. There were no clubs to join. And if you didn't like playing uh, sports with balls, options were slim. She crawled back into her safe shell. Last week, Ruby took her first outdoor class with Eileen. Watching her leap in the air fearlessly is giving my daughter something to be passionate about. Uh, I read the opposite of play is depression. What Eileen is providing for my daughter is priceless. She's empowering my quiet, shy daughter to not be afraid to shine and take risks and above all to play. Maybe we should all take some flying lessons from her. Please allow for this beautiful service to continue to take flight. That was Peggy Lyman. And the second one from uh, Megan Frediello writes, I'm writing in support of Eileen Little and Nathan Cohen's request to add an addition to their current home. I have studied aerial dance with Eileen for six years, but now only when she can set her rig up outdoors. It's my dream to be able to train year round with Eileen, who's both an incredible coach and an incredible artist. Her gifts as a professional aerialist, coach and performer are treasures that we are lucky to have here in Gloucester. She adds so much to the incredibly rich artistic community that defines our city. This art form is one that brings people together and the possibilities it offers, even in the small class sizes Eileen is proposing, is so exciting. It also requires year round conditioning to continue and without the chance to train with Eileen indoors year round, students are forced to stop when the weather gets cold and then restart all over again, going backwards for a while to retrain their strengths when spring and summer roll around again. For the last several years, I've watched Eileen try unsuccessfully to find spaces to teach that she can afford in Gloucester that offer high enough ceilings with the required structural characteristics. This option would, be, would finally bring a solution. Eileen's teachings belong in Gloucester. This would offer so many benefits to those who train with her, and while her classes would be small, the benefits they would offer to her students, to the city of Gloucester, and the community as a whole are enormous. Um, and then those are just you know, two of the really pretty letters that came in. Um, Again, past the deadline, but I wanted to make sure everyone had a chance to hear. Where's my mouse? Sorry, guys. So let's get into the standards to be applied, because obviously, as much as we'd like it to be just based on these really heartfelt letters, we have to get through the legal part of this. We got two steps here. It is a special permit, so we're under 128.3, but it's also a home occupation accessory permit, so we have extra uh, conditions thrown in section 5.3. Going through 128.3, um, as was mentioned in those letters, and as I mentioned, this is the first, it would be the only indoor aerial dance studio on Cape Ann. So that serves a huge community need. Traffic flow and safety, the increase in traffic is negligible. Uh, it's no more than a handful of cars per week. And this street, um, as you all know, leads to Plum Cove. So certainly um, the traffic generated on this street, you're not gonna notice a few people coming and going from aerial uh, dance class compared to what this street already sees um, throughout the school year and in the summer where, you know, people come to use the, the playground in the field. Adequacy of utilities, there's no impact to emergency vehicle access, very little additional strain on the utilities. As for the neighborhood character and social structure, again, you know, um, this is a really beautiful neighborhood and then the neighbors are neighborly, but this is a unique neighborhood in that it also invites people already from all over the city and even the island to come to it. People from all over Gloucester come to Plum Cove School. So this neighborhood's used to receiving visitors. Um, and these, these lessons and Eileen's personal practice are already taking place. This just adds some privacy and lets it continue when the weather's not great. There will be some reduction of green space, uh, green space but um, more than 83% of the lot would still be uncovered as lot coverage is defined in the, in the zoning ordinance. And fiscal impact, there's obviously short-term construction jobs and municipal permit fees. And for long-term, there's an increased tax revenue because they're improving upon and expanding um, their residential structure out in Lanesville. Then we get into the, the particular standards for home occupation. So you can't use more than 25% of the floor area of the residence for home occupation. And if you add up all the spaces, there's 2,480 square feet of total floor space. That leaves a maximum of 620 to be used for home occupation and 576 square feet is proposed. That is the 24 by 24 foot um, square addition. 532 says not more than one person who's not a member of the household should be employed. There are no employees proposed, it'll just be Eileen. Um, no exterior displays, no variation from the residential character of the principal building. 
this addition was designed to appear purely residential. Um, it's also designed, you know, if some point in the future, um, Nathan and Eileen, you know, for some reason have to, to move, this is very easily used as a great room or any other sort of traditional residential um, space. And compliance with signage requirements, they have no problem agreeing to those. Obviously, they haven't even proposed any signage. Um, it would probably be something limited to just pointing to the studio entrance, right? <clears throat> Five, three, four, no offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. That's obviously not an issue with an aerial uh, dance instruction. Traffic generated shall not exceed volumes normally expected in a residential neighborhood. And so we're willing to take a condition that no more than four adults or six students, um, six, you know, child students at any time. And we expect most lessons will be less than that anyway. For perspective, this is you know similar traffic that you would get by inviting two couples over for dinner or for an after-school carpool meetup. Um, it's probably less traffic generated than someone teaching piano or guitar lessons at home, and certainly those are all over the city. So we think this is pretty much you know a normal expectation of, of residential traffic is maintained with this proposal. And then 536, parking generated should be accommodated off-street other than a required front yard. And so back on the site plan, there was um, a little dashed area that showed how you could comply with this strictly if required to. But uh, I'm here tonight to suggest that it might be better to not require them to install so much additional parking. Uh, one, it's a visual impact on the neighborhood. Two, it eliminates additional green space. And three, you know, these lessons have been going on without a full parking lot, without issue. You can still get three cars in this existing driveway, but just not in a conforming way. As you all know, the zoning ordinance requires a nine by 18 space. You have to have enough space to back out, turn around without moving another car, et cetera, et cetera. So if you have three cars parked tandem, that's like a, a zero, right? It doesn't actually count. You'd have to have three cars um, parked separately. And we think that although it's, um, you know, not quite perfectly conforming, it meets the gist of what this regulation is trying to um, accomplish. And so we would ask that when you, if you were to grant this home occupation permit, you would condition it that the current parking may stay as configured. And we'd even be happy to, you know, put some sort of trigger or whatever, that we'd come back in to, to check in, you know, to show that it's, it's been working fine, if that was the case. And then the last one says, you can't get a special permit until a public hearing. And that's why we're here tonight. And lastly, we have the alter expand standard. So again, it says that a special permit to alter expand shall not be required um, for a pre-existing non-conforming single family residence if such work will not increase the non-conforming nature of said residence. And as I pointed out, there is no increase. The increase is the lot size and the left side yard setback. The lot size isn't changing and the left side yard is not being impacted by what's going on here. So I think you can make that finding that there is no increase and therefore uh, the non there is no uh, special permit required, but obviously in the alternative, if you found there was an increase, you just have to make sure that the addition, not even getting into the home occupation, just making sure the addition itself wasn't substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. And I think you can see by the overwhelming support from the neighbors as shown on that map, that this is not gonna be detrimental to anybody. Everyone, um, nearly everyone in the neighborhood is, is uh, squarely in favor of it. So I thank you again for listening and I'll stop my share and open it up to the board. Thank you. Uh, questions by the board? Yeah, I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, Attorney Pavaza, I'm just curious, um, the, on the map you showed with the neighbors in favor of this petition, um, I noticed the neighbor directly to the left, I think it's four Hickory Street was not highlighted, um, was he or she contacted and just couldn't be a part of the petition or not? I'll put it back up for you. Well, I, I would answer, I believe there's a letter that came in in your packet last week and that that person plans to speak tonight. Oh. Yeah, so you're referring to 154.30? Yes. Yeah, that they were not willing to sign the petition and as the chairman alluded to, I believe they will speak tonight. Gotcha, okay. They were approached by, um, Nathan and Eileen. Perfect, thank you. Sure thing. I have a question <clears throat> on the floor plan. Um, you talked about the home occupancy being the 24 by 24, but the rest of the building doesn't appear to be accessible from the home. So it's either part of the home or it's part of the 
the home occupancy. And I just wanted to clear that up. Sure, I'll put that up too. I mean, if there's a doorway, you can say, well, that whole front entry is part so, of the So you see the wall here. Yep. So this, this is part of the addition, but it's not part of the home occupancy. It's, it's going to be incorporated into the space that's already part of the single family residence. The home occupancy will be um, limited to the square 24 by 24. And how do you get into it? To use it. There's, there's doors um, in the center here. Let me see if I can get another okay. slide. Yeah, you can't really yeah, so, see. Yeah, there's the door is right here in the center. So that will be the entrance to the studio. The studio entrance, correct. And this, so the breezeway uh, connector, just, is that accessible from the house? Yeah, I think there's going to be um, a, a doorway in there. But again, maybe so the, someone in the house could get through the breezeway into it. But again, this portion of it will not be used. It'll, it'll be okay. when students are present, the door is shut, and this is a big part yep. of the residence. No, that's fine. I just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. OK, any other questions by the board at this time? We'll go to public testimony. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak in favor of the application? Please raise your hand. First up, I believe uh, Mr. and Mrs. Willison. We can bring them in, Scott and Kelly. Hi, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Scott Willison, and my wife here with me is Kelly Willison, and we both live at 23 High Street with our 10-month-old Cyrus. Thank you. Go ahead. I just want to voice my support uh, for this project uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, it's a pursuit of Miss Little's vocation. Um, I think that's something worthy of support. I'm not concerned personally um, about any impact on traffic. Um, as probably everyone knows, we're around the corner from Plum Cove School. And if you've seen the lineup of cars down High Street on pickup time, um, this uh, request is not going to, uh, it's not even going to, uh, you're not even going to notice it. Because um, especially when everyone comes down High Street and takes that left onto Young Street, um, uh, we're, we're very aware of uh, what the traffic patterns are. And um, I can tell the board that uh, I'm not concerned uh, on that count. Um, I would like to um, express that um, this pursuit is uh, educational and enriching. Uh, especially when it comes to the youth of the community. And um, it seems like every year we hear that arts programs in schools are being cut from budgets. And um, I think this is a wholesome antidote to that. Um, so I think for that reason, it should be uh, supported. Um, and lastly, just in terms of dollars and cents, I can tell you that I am not concerned um, about any effect this might have on the value of our property uh, personally. So uh, for, what's, for what that is worth. Um, and then in terms of uh, privacy, uh, I guess this is the last thing I'll, I'll say. Um, in terms of privacy, this would, this would be an improvement um, because what, what you're essentially doing is you're taking something that is uh, currently outdoor and you're putting it indoor. So. Uh, if there are any privacy concerns out there, uh, it would be a net improvement um, and overall uh, a good thing. So uh, that's what I have to add. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Please raise your hand. If you're on the phone, I'll remind you to dial star, what am I dialing? Star nine to uh, raise your hand on your phone. Anyone in favor? Seeing none, we'll ask if anyone wish to speak in opposition to the application. Please raise your hand. Anyone in opposition? I see first up Owen Freeman. We can bring him in. And sir, you'll have to unmute yourself. There you go. Great. Thank, thank you, Chairman Parisi and the board. Um, my name is Owen Freeman. I live right next to Dorda, Nathan, and Eileen. And, um, What's that I, address? I am, I am the only, the lone. Um, Mr. Freeman? Yes. Can you, can you state the, rec the address for the record? 
Yes, it's actually for Hickory Street. Thank you. Immediately to the left of this project. And um, I am not in favor of it. I think it's gonna negatively impact my property because unlike my neighbors who are in support of it, they really don't live so close to this project. Um, Eileen's aerial frame is currently outside and it will remain outside and it's right over the fence line. It sticks up about 20 feet in the air and just kind of dominates every time I look to the right at my house, I see this aerial frame and I also see people hanging off of it up in space kind of alarmingly, you know, looking into my yard. So it is a privacy issue for me, a definite privacy issue. And the aerial frame apparently is gonna remain even when they try to move it inside, if the frame will remain outside for outdoor events. Um, I'm not concerned about the traffic. I'm concerned about the noise from six kids and their four parents and uh, the car starting and stopping. It's not just traffic going up the street. It's just the noise of coming and going and uh, little kids joyfully running around. I mean, I'm sure they're all gonna have fun, but I just don't think it's appropriate to do it in a really tight um, residential neighborhood. I bought a residential property and I don't wanna have it zoned commercially, even if it's restrictively codified. I think once you open up that can of worms, it could be reopened um, down the road. And um, I, uh, I uh, just don't wanna see a creep of these home-based businesses like invading residential neighborhoods. There is a place for this, but I think it's in a more open, this is not a high density neighborhood. It's just a regular residential neighborhood. And I just don't want the noise from kids and adults and talking. Excuse me? Oh, I didn't see you. Oh, I'm sorry. And, and also, you know, Nathan is a great musician. I'm afraid he's gonna have, you know, string quartet practices and gigs in the barn and, um, you know, yes, the additions on the far side of the of his house from my side, but actually it forces all the outdoor activity sort of towards my end of his property, which is the part that he's already um, too close to already. So I'm, I'm just concerned about the noise and I don't want these home-based businesses to start to destroy quiet residential places. I have an office downtown and I love to come home to a quiet place. And it's pretty simple. Um, nothing against Nathan and Eileen, they're great people. They have tons of support, but the people who support them do not live right next door to this thing. And uh, that's all I had to say, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Please raise your hand. <clears throat> Seeing none, we'll, um, we'll go to rebuttal. Thank you very much. I'll be brief just to bring this back up to make it easy for everyone to see what we're talking about. Um, so to the, the concerns raised by Mr. Freeman, who lives at what's being shown as 15430, which is for Hickory. Um, so first off, the current rig is in what we call the back left corner of the property. That is the rig that would be moving into the right-hand side addition. That rig will not remain up. Um, you know, Eileen has indicated that maybe on occasion, if the weather is really beautiful, they might do something outside. But the whole purpose of this is to get that rig away from this part of the property so that people like Mr. Freeman are not experiencing people up over the fence line, looking into their backyard. So when he comes home from his long day at his downtown office for a quiet space, He's not greeted by what apparently alarms him as people in the air, right? They're gonna be indoors where he can't see them. And then that's another point he made about not living right next door. The neighbor toward whom they are approaching with this addition is in favor. So the neighbor they're getting closer to is in favor. The neighbor they are moving away from is complaining. And the last point I'll make is, you'll see at the bottom of this, this is Plum Cove School. It is a K through five elementary school that houses any between 200 and 225 students on a yearly basis and several dozen staff members. And we have Mr. Freeman complaining about the noise of children and or adults in the neighborhood. Again, you know, I'm sorry, but you bought 
a property on Hickory Street, an aerial dance studio contained inside a conforming addition is the least of your problems if your concern is children and adults having a nice time. So th that's all I'm going to say for now. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion by the board. <clears throat> so I remind the board members, this is a two-part test to begin with, with regard to the special permit to alter and expand. We will, um, if anyone feels that it's not an increase in nonconformity, we'll take a motion to rule that, which would dispense with the need for the special permit to alter and expand. However, then we will hear the home occupancy special permit application that we a separate vote. But discussion by the board? Yeah, so for me, the alter and expand is an either or. I don't, I don't see that as an issue at all. Um, for, I mean, for me personally, I, I, I don't think there's an increase in nonconformity, but if others do, um, I don't think uh, the addition of the 24 by 24 with a, with a you know, connecting breezeway is substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, I have concerns. Uh, um, I share some of the neighbors' concerns. I'm, I'm wondering if Joel's uh, client is willing to condition um, that if we allow, that if I allowed um, for my vote home occupancy, uh, there would be no more um, tripod out in the back. Period. That it would that it wouldn't um, that that she would relinquish um, any outdoor use of that tripod. Um, so you don't have to answer this second, but um, I have concerns and I share uh, the direct neighbor's concerns. If I was that direct neighbor, I would also. Um, share those concerns. I also have so, um, some concerns about um, the, the parking. I, if, I think if we, if we move in favor, I probably would be interested in not forcing them to um, pave and accommodate um, four to six parking spaces or whatever needs to happen. I would probably be interested in some sort of relief there, conditional relief. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else on the board? Um, yeah, so I do not think that there is an increase in nonconformity. So I do not think a special permit is needed for that. Um, I do understand the neighbor's concerns. Um, although I, now that Joel has kind of clarified that they are moving the outdoor structure inside um, and that there wouldn't be a structure outside. Um, I think he's right, they're moving they're moving her home occupation, so to speak, farther away from the neighbor who has the issue and closer to the neighbor who is in support. Um, so I don't know, just my thoughts. Thank you. I would echo what uh, Adria said. And um, I think uh, it's, uh, it's important to have these type of activities for the youth in our community. Uh, I think it's very important. Uh, for their way of growing up. Not every kid, uh, like one of the uh, uh, people who spoke, um, not every kid falls into certain sports. And if this one helps target uh, an audience of kids that make them feel accepted and, and you know, purpose, then I, I think that's a good addition to the community. Thank you, Peter. Why don't we clear up the um, addition, the, uh the alternate expand and I would entertain a motion to state that the belief is that it's not an increase in nonconformity and therefore it doesn't require a special permit to alternate expand. If someone wants to make that motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I would move a finding that the proposed alteration of the non-conforming building. It's not substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conformity. So that would be if we were granting the special permit, what you just said, but we're saying that we don't believe it's an increase in non-conformity, therefore it doesn't require the special permit if you wanna make such a motion, or if you do wanna just- I thought I did. Um, <laughs> so you would let, I, I, so am I moving that, that it is not substantially more detrimental? No, you could move that it's not an increase in nonconformity and therefore doesn't require a special permit, if you believe that. 
I'm not I do believe that. that. I move that this is not an increase in the non-conforming. It's not substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conformity. No. No, that's, 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 that's somebody, somebody make this motion for me. She'll support it. You second what I say, all right? All right. Um, so I don't think it's an increase in non-conformity and therefore it does not warrant a special permit. Motion made. Seconded. Second. Second. Roll call. <laughs> Quite see the difference. Uh, Mr. Nyman. Yes. Ms. Schlichty. Yes. Mr. Canavo. Yes. Ms. Pratt. Yes. Mr. Parisi. Yes. So we've, it's a favorable. We've ruled that it's not an increase in nonconformity, therefore it doesn't require a special permit to alter and expand. Now we'll move on to the home occupancy application for a special permit, again, of which can be conditioned. Discussion by the board? Um, I, I, I share Michael's opinion that the, I mean, I, th I think it's great what you're doing. I don't have a problem with the home occupancy, but it's obviously is having an impact on the neighbor. And, you know, he has a right to enjoy his property as well. And I think that if you're coming for some relief that it's not unreasonable to condition it to say, yeah. I mean, I would be in favor of granting this addition for the home occupation, but I think that they need to say, keep it indoors, just keep it all in that building. So I, I would like to see that condition on the, on the home occupancy as well. And uh, Michael had mentioned a condition of not... Uh, allowing the existing parking to serve adequately. Is that sort of what you I would be in favor of that as well. Okay. I would also be in favor of that. I don't Any think- the conditions good. that would need to be, anyone's thinking about that would need to be put in the motion? Yeah, so just right. so, we're, so we're clear on the parking. I think, I think uh, and, and Joel might have to explain it a tiny bit better as to what is required. Um, I would not, I would be willing to condition um, that we're not requiring, you know, additional paving or, you know, whatever might be required to accommodate um, an additional four or five or six cars, whatever needs to be accommodated technically. Um, I, I think that would really be a detriment to the neighborhood. It would make it feel very commercial if we required some sort of additional paving in that front yard. Okay. And um, <clears throat> one other, on the condition about the, um, the aerial device, we need to be clear of what we're banning because so we, we're saying that any aerial device must be used indoors because we don't want to say, I mean, they want to put a swing set up in the yard. They're certainly yeah, of course, of course. Well, I just want to make sure when the decision or the motion's made or decision written that it only pertains to that, whatever that aerial device is, be limited to not being able to be used in that backyard just to, to save their other rights, you know? Any other okay. discussion by the board? I don't think so. Joel has his hand up, so. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to bring Joel back to clarify the parking. Thank you. Um, so I think to serve Mr. Nyman's request, if you were to vote in favor of granting the home occupation special permit, um, you would you would also make a finding that the parking as presently configured is adequate and no additional parking needs to be constructed um, as part of the home occupation special permit. Um, and that I think can be just part of the finding that you make. My only I just have one question. I talked to uh, my clients and they're they're fine to take the restriction that you know um, the the rig and, and lessons be done indoors year round. So if that's what it takes to Get this over the finish line, my clients are willing to accommodate. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we'll need motions um, on the home occupancy with conditions. Okay, on the petition of Nathan Cohen and Eileen Little, um, seeking a special permit for a home occupation to allow construction of a 24 by 24 foot addition to the existing single family home. I think that Joel is adequately made the case that it meets the requirements for the home uh, occupancy. I would um, make a finding that the existing configuration, parking configuration is adequate and does not need to be uh, further modified for the home occupation. 
and I would condition the granting of the home occupation um, that all aerial devices uh, be kept inside the building. Okay. Yeah, I would second that. And I think the spirit of that is that the particular large aerial device that's being used in the backyard, I think I just want to be really clear, even if it's just in our minutes, that that's the spirit of what we're saying. And that's the spirit of what the neighbor um, at four Hickory um, is opposed to and continues to voice his concerns about. So hopefully, um, so yeah, so I just want to make sure that, that that's that's the spirit of what we're saying and that that will be adequately conveyed in your draft to us, Joe. Thank you, Michael. Motion made and seconded to approve the home occupancy with conditions stated. Roll call vote. Just an Iman. Yes, on, uh, yes, on home occupancy with the two conditions stated. Ms. Schlichty. Yes. Mr. Canavo. Yes. Ms. Pratt. Sorry, yes, with the conditions as stated. Mr. Parisi. Yes. We've heard our decisions favorable. Um, Greg, if you could uh, stamp and sign those plans on behalf of the board. And yes. Ernie Favaza, if you might prepare a draft on this. I said, well, thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, our next hearing, um, James, you're going to be voting on this one in my place. I will still run the hearing. The petition of Jennifer and Jeffrey Scuteri seeking special permit under 1.9, alter and expand a non-conforming structure, a special permit 2.4.5, demolition and replacement of a pre-existing non-conforming single or two-family residence to allow the demolition of an existing one-story single-family dwelling and replace it with a new two-story single-family dwelling at 8 Russ Road. Attorney Nest 